Hello everyone, I'm Brett and welcome to Nightwood Guns. Today on Nightwood Guns, I'm bringing Cyberpunk and Blade Runner to you. Or at least the closest thing to it, the Chiapa Rhino. So today I'm going to be answering the question of, is the Chiapa Rhino worth the hype? Or is it just a gimmick? I'm just a curious little rhino. I appreciate your agreeing to undertake this. As per the usual, today you are getting a consumer unbiased point of view. Nobody ever sends me guns. In fact, nobody ever sends me anything. If you'd like to throw me some support, I wrote a short novel that's action-packed, edgy your seat, thriller, sci-fi. You're gonna absolutely love it. The link is in the description below. It's a win-win. You support a two-way author and YouTuber, and you get a really awesome short novel to enjoy. Now let's get into the Chiapa Rhino. So whether you want to feel like a cyberpunk detective, or if you are interested in the fact that the Chiapa shoots from the lower barrel, essentially reducing muzzle rise, then I can assure you this revolver will not disappoint. So in my hands, I have a Chiapa Rhino 50DS, which just means it is the five inch barrel variant in the very flashy chrome. Get that in your suit unless I tell you to take it out. You get yourself a Glock, lose that nickel plated sissy pistol. It has exceeded all of my expectations. Honestly, I'm really surprised. When this gun first came out, I was excited, I looked at it, but the trigger on it was horrendous, and I saw that some people were having some problems with it, so I held off. Now, here we are, like 10 years later, and I pick one up again, and guess what? The trigger on it is phenomenal. In fact, that's actually what ended up selling me on the gun, for sure, was how surprised I was by the trigger. This one feels almost like a Performance Center Smith & Wesson trigger. If you think I'm making that up, I have a Performance Center Smith & Wesson here that I can directly compare it to. I'm telling you that if this Performance Center Smith & Wesson trigger is like a 9 out of 10, this Chiapa Rhino trigger is like an 8.5 out of 10. It is almost there. Also, this gun is insanely lightweight. Like, wow. You look at this thing and you're like, man, this is a beast. Whoosh, you can pistol whip somebody with this. But this gun, mostly aluminum alloy. I would say with the hexagonal cylinder making it a thinner profile, along with how lightweight this gun is, this would make an excellent carry revolver if that's your thing. I think the cylinder release is super cool and intuitive, really easy to get to. The double action trigger has a surprisingly short travel, which makes it pull a lot like a striker fire gun. The rail on this is super cool. If you're a revolver person and you want a revolver for home defense, you could put a weapon light on that and be good to go. And the thing is cut for moon clips. The sights are serviceable and the grip is actually one of the high points that I don't feel like enough people talk about. It lets you get a really high grip on this gun and it really gets your hand directly over the line of the bore. Now that segues into the meat and potatoes of this gun, the fact that it shoots from the bottom chamber, the barrel is actually on the bottom. Now I'm not gonna say that this reduces felt recoil, but what it does is it reduces muzzle flip. Because since you can get such a high grip on the gun and it's completely in line with the barrel, when this thing goes off, it puts all the recoil directly into your arm instead of sitting up here on the top chamber, causing it to flip just because of the leverage. So what this gun does is you still have the recoil of 357 Magnum or 38, whatever you're shooting, but the muzzle does not flip. It is so easy to shoot this thing fast. And if you're looking for a revolver for competition or for home defense or for carry, the short travel of the trigger and the virtually zero muzzle rise make this thing a beast. Now I am absolutely head over heels for this revolver. It was a pleasant surprise for me. It's so rare that you can get a gun that looks so cool, at least in my eyes. I have special eyes. That actually performs well. But essentially there are three things about this gun that I don't really like. The first thing is, I wish they chambered this thing in 44 Magnum as well. 44 Mag is one of my favorite calibers. The Mateba that was designed by the same guy that designed this was chambered in 44 Magnum as well as 357 Magnum, so kind of disappointing that they don't have this in 44 Mag as well. That's kind of the least of the things that I don't like about it. My biggest complaint on this firearm is just the nature of the beast when it comes to the design of it. If you shoot with a thumbs forward grip, the cylinder blast coming off of that bottom chamber with 38 Special, feels like your thumb's getting hit with a hammer, and with 357 Magnum, might actually split your thumb open. So you have to shoot this gun with crossed thumbs or high thumbs, but high thumbs you still feel it. So you're pretty much designated to cross thumbs either on the front or over the back strap. And finally, the third thing isn't a problem, it's just a concern, 
if for whatever reason this gun detonates, which I've seen Smith's detonate, I've seen Ruger's detonate, and those things haven't been too deadly. Usually the barrel blows off or the top of the frame and the top of the cylinder blow off, parts go flying, but usually the person can walk away okay. But with this thing, if it detonates while you're shooting it, it's detonating in this bottom chamber and it would probably blow your trigger finger off. Because think about it, if you see a normal revolver detonate, it all comes out the top. If this revolver detonated, it would all come out the bottom right where your trigger finger is. Now, I'm not saying this gun is ever going to detonate. I've seen no indication of that whatsoever. I'm sure it's happened to somebody at some point because it's just one of those things that can happen. It's like getting struck by lightning. It's a rarity. But obviously, if you're somebody who shoots reloads, that might be a bit of concern if you accidentally make a mistake and double charge around. It's rare, but try to stick to quality ammo with this gun because if for whatever reason it goes off, you're going to be a middle finger shooter from now on. With those criticisms aside, I can honestly say that this is my favorite 357 Magnum revolver. With how flat this thing shoots and the intuitiveness of the controls, how smooth it is, I mean, this thing also has a bank vault lockup. I don't know if I've ever felt a firearm lockup like this before. It is everything that you look for in a quality revolver. I highly recommend it. If you're thinking about getting one, I'd say go for it. I've certainly not been disappointed. I really appreciate you stopping by and checking out my video today. Be sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to my very small, very humble channel. Every subscription really helps. And check out my book in the link in the description. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm Brett, and this was Nightwood Guns. Nightwood out.